So uh, we'll talk about frequencies in images. So I guess like first thing first, I, I, I want to uh, make it clear that like, uh, don't be confused about the frequency you think about light. Like it's not EM wave frequency. When I'm talking about the frequency, like you think of that image as a signal, it's a two dimensional signal. So we are talking about some spatial frequency there. So in the sense that you think of like, uh, low frequency when the image is mostly flat, smooth, is high frequency when you look at edges and so on. So I guess I, I mentioned some of this like, before I even define what, what, do we, I mean, what do I mean by frequency uh, last time or something. Oh, okay, I'm also like uh, an announcement. I put a homework assignment in Canvas, if you guys realize that. So it is supposed to be due like a week or two, a week or half, like uh, from from now. So mm -hmm. just just go to campus and take a look. So um, and uh, so this uh, this painting is by I guess I like, Salvador like Dali, and uh, in nineteen sixty seven or seventy six. What did you see? What do you see actually? Really? Uh, so uh, I'm not sure I have the answer here, but I, I will have answer like a couple slides later on. So you you can wait a little bit. So, uh, yeah, this is just like what I'm saying, like we will talk about like frequency mostly. Uh, and again, like it's about, let me just change my pointer to pan, oops, not pan, 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 pan here. Spatial frequency. So it's all about spatial frequency. Now do not be confused with like frequency of light. light. So uh, let me just say, like, so another, oops, that's so annoying. Can I, no, I cannot because I changed it to, I need, I need to change one pointer back. Ah, that's so annoying. So, but, um, you may have seen that before. Uh, I think you should go back. <laughs> so what what uh what do you see? Ah, <laughs> uh, let me just stop it. Yeah. Uh, let me go back to here. <laughs> so who is here? Who is here? Oh. I guess you guys are more uh, know better about people than I do. Like I cannot, I don't know their name. I mean, I, I can't kind of know the one one of the guys. Like, I know at least Einstein. The other, actually, I need to take it up. Uh, I know she's famous, but I I I don't know her top like English name. I can only I I can't only know his Chinese name. So anyway, but I I don't know. Maybe she's too old for your generation. Do you know like the girl? Oh. So, okay. I guess you can't know at least. I'm sorry for my, aller my allergy. Okay, anyway, so, um, so as you see, like when we lower, lower the information, something is amazing happened. So for this image, like this image, it doesn't seem to be anything special. Like when we lower the information, some, I mean, lower the resolution somehow. But as you see, like for this one that we just saw earlier, uh, we just, Totally see two different things. So, so um, definitely when we lower the resolution, we should lose information, right? But somehow we, we, it seems like we actually gain some kind of information to see something else. If you can think of that the other way. So, um, so uh, basically the, the trick is like some nice work by, it's, that's a name for what we just seen. Like it's called hybrid image. And it was uh, actually, uh, a work was published like, in SIGGRAPH like, in 2006. So as you show it here, there's a, 
Kafka trying to generate a hybrid image. That's actually the first assignment. I'm trying to ask you guys just to create a hybrid image of you and one of your friend. Uh, so this would be a simple assignment. So um, um, basically, uh, the idea is very simple. Like you, you're trying to create a high pass. Uh, okay, you have two images. One go for a high pass filter. One go for a low pass filter, and then you merge them together. So then, uh, in one distance you can't kind of see the high pass, and in other distance you see the low pass. That's basically it. And this is another kind of example. Also, like trying to create a hybrid image of like a cat and a person. And uh, so, and and of course, like, when we lower the resolution, what really happening is like we we are doing sampling, right? So now it's going back again, like some of the signal processing that you're supposed to have learned, like in DSP or like just plainly uh, signal processing. I, I suppose you should have learned that. Um, so so what's what happens is basically when when we lower the resolution. Uh, so the most naive way to do a kind of like when you reduce the resolution. By the way, like you, you start with an image like this one, right? The image size, let's say, is like uh, 512, uh, actually, mo yeah, let's say it's 512 by 512. If I shrink by two, then the size will be like only 256 by 256, right? <coughs> and then I, I should have like, I mean, much fewer numbers of pixels. So what we can do is I simply do a down sampling, right? So we can maybe like from the original image, we just sample all the all pixels there and then just pack that all of them together. So it sounds reasonable things to do, like down sampling. So but what what's the ca catch here? There's some caveat here. So um do you guys already know? Like actually it's not uh, exactly the best way to do like if you just do it that way, you will have some problem typically. Do do you know that? Like If you think of like, okay, I, I think some of you guys have taken DSP or something. Yes, you, you must have heard that like when you down sample something, what, what's used, what's, what may happen? I mean, what? Yes, 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 I'm, I'm looking for that word. So if you just say, like, uh, do down sampling directly, like, like this example here, if I have pattern, like this, ooh, 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 let me get back the pen here. Uh, yeah, maybe not. Uh, it's okay, let me get the pen. Pen, ah, uh, <coughs> pen. Hunt to get to the pen, yeah. So I, I, I may start with like 256 by 256, then I then sample, so I, I just sample every odd, odd pixels to 128 by 128, and so on and so forth. Eventually, it will just get aliasing really bad. Like to have a pattern is totally different from original. Mm -hmm. So, um, so why is that? Is that like you think of like a simple, let's say, uh, I have a very simple signal. I saw so the wave like in one D, and uh, I have a particular frequency for this, for this thing, right? And if I down sample it somehow, um. Then I I I, uh, I I I would just lost this frequency information. My original is like a wave with this particular frequency, but like if I down sample like this way, I will just get a totally different frequency. Maybe I I can give a okay better example. Oh, better example maybe later on. I don't have okay. Let me get uh. Oh, okay, I need to get back to again, again. <laughs> need to keep changing this pointer back and forth. Uh, automatic. So this is again some video example. It's kind of fun to see. Uh, <laughs> so try to look at the view there. Stop. Okay. 
you see that like top it stopped for a while and then also it that's the old one let me go to another one uh, okay this one is even cooler So this is uh, uh, an amazing helicopter that the uh, the bay just just doesn't turn and still like fly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, so why why is that? So um, <laughs> so basically, if you look at for example like example like this, if you Think of like the wheel just turning this forward, right? If you look at this dot here, like look at it's just uh, keep moving forward. But if you look at like the way we sample it, so so this is basically the time axis, right? So you think of like the next time instance or like at the middle of here, supposingly I should the wheel should be moving to maybe let's say this position, right? In the middle. So, uh, and maybe at the here, between here and here, I, 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 my wheel is even like just, I mean, I mean in the middle of between this and this again. But what I'm saying, if you are only sampling at this location, these couple locations here, and if you ignore the dots here, and if you don't see a dot, what you can see is you will have some kind of uh, illusion that this wheel is seems like it's turning the turning the anti-clockwise direction rather than clockwise direction. And because you look at it here, in the next step, it looks like it's just moving slowly in this direction and slowly this direction and so on and so forth. So that's that's exactly what you're seeing in the videos there. So you you just uh, get a completely. Uh, in call that information. Or oh, actually another one that I guess if you study DSP before like digital cell processing, then what happened when we, we do start do sampling, if we are going to repeat okay, this is the original signal in frequency domain, let's say. And when you do sampling, you basically will repeat this thing many, many times. Right? And when you repeat basically uh, you will repeat with each of these pattern separated by one over the kind of like two pi over one over the sampling time there. So if your sampling time is is more than it's okay, they will separate quite far apart. Like this one, they will separate quite far apart, then <coughs> you won't have this kind of aliasing problem. So afterward, let's say if you want to uh, get this original signal back, you can do it no pass filter and get rid of all these, then you get back the original signal, right? But the problem is that if you don't done you I mean you, you don't sample enough, then you will have this overlapping of this pattern. So you get this part here that is the aliasing. So now no matter where you do this low pass filter here, you still have some problem at this region here. And that's that's the kind of like DSP kind of uh, explanation. So let me go back to some of these nice looking patterns also. Um, so therefore, like, sampling is can be dangerous. I mean, in the sense you should do something wisely. You, you Either you should sample enough or uh, what should you do? Uh, one way, of course, you should supposed to sample enough, but if you, you, you decide to just sample not as much as it's supposed to be, what's the next best thing you're supposed to do? So if you look at, go back to this one here, let's see, uh, maybe go back to this, this, this thing here. One thing is a bit better is if you don't do enough maybe it's better for you just do a low pass filter first. Then in that sense, you just cut off this part, right? And then when you do the sampling, then at least you don't have this parts get overlapping with each other. So therefore, like, 
if you don't want to sample as much, one standard way to do like is that you want to do a low pass filter first. Afterward, you do the uh, do the like sampling. So like like this one. So if I first do a low pass filtering, at least I get back like some of this pattern here. So I mean it's at least it I mean you miss lots of information, but it doesn't get like something totally different from the original. So again, I I, I still want to go back to some of these nice looking examples. Let's see. Uh, and we, we mentioned some of these are uh, interesting, like the car wheels just moving backward. And there's uh, some some patterns on that, like, I don't know how to pronounce that. It's French. I don't know who is any French here, like Moray or like, I don't know, patterns. And uh, it's basically, it's like also due to like aliasing. So, uh, and this is one example, like kind of interesting. If you down sample this wall, uh, kind of without like uh, without uh, low uh, low pass filter ahead, then you have like kind of like interesting wave pattern like that. So of course this is totally illusion. And uh, this is another illusion that appears in graphic that if you don't do the covert like down sampling, you just have like very bad like display. Okay, this is another illusion like to show you. Guys, I, uh, this is kind of interesting. Uh, and again, like this, I guess like, I, I like to show you guys, I, uh, of course, you s one of the things you see this, like, that alias aliasing patterns here. But there's another illusion here. I'm not sure you kind of catch that. So um, a actually, this blue and green is same color. Yeah. So just don't trust your eye. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> most of the time you shouldn't trust your eye. So if you soon, uh, it still is hard to see. But if you soon a little bit now, it's kind of like okay, it looks a bit more believable. This is like same color, but here it's kind of difficult, I guess. So, but yeah, don't always trust your eyes. So, um, so we have go through that. Let's see what else. So we mentioned that like okay, we we should just sample more. I right? do low pass filtering. I'm so I'm so uh, uh yeah. So um, I, I, again I just. A little bit. I don't know why I have a uh, 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 include cool, like some function in MATLAB that for for you guys are interested. But I guess that uh, you can just do a help function and find out like what's going on. I like, just Google it. So um, and uh, let's see what else. Oh, okay. This is still a more example that if without P filter and with P filter, P filter. That's what I mean by low pass filtering. That like if you just down sample with the low pass filtering, have all these blocky artifacts. But for this case, this doesn't look too good. Also, I guess the filter doesn't set um, very nicely. So ah, okay, actually I'm pretty quick. Maybe we can live like in half an hour or something. Okay, anyway. So um um. Oh, okay. This is one thing that uh, one one slide I like to show you guys. So, so it's kind of um, uh, I I uh, I I guess the use is trying to explain the um, kind of the what hybrid image, uh, the, 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 the the biology behind the hy uh, hybrid image. Uh, basically, saying that like for for. For people, I'm not sure. Like, for me, I, I uh, because I again, like, we tend to think that like whatever we see is the same as I like, what other people see. But like, as you know about the gold, I mean the golden dress and also the blue dress. Like, everyone sees things like quite differently, right? So like for this one, like, uh, 
guess it's hard for, for you guys to see. So this is actually lines for a uh, different contrast here. I mean, like, uh, when you go up the lines here, of course, it's a different wavelength. And then, like, also, like, this, when you go up, it's basically different contrast. So one thing I want to ask you is, like, um, where, where can you see the cut-off point <coughs> for each of these lines here, these different width lines here? What I mean is, like, if I, I going to read this line, maybe somewhere, I don't know, hard to say. Actually, if I, I, if I try to cut, watch it really carefully, I cannot see the cutoff here. But something like maybe somewhere here, I would say I cannot distinguish like this and this. And maybe for here, maybe I cannot distinguish from here and this and something like that. Um, and Basically, for different width, like it, it tends to have a our eyes tend to uh, kind of behave in a way that's called this Cam uh, Campbell like uh, Watson like contrast sensitivity curve. Basically, um, when we are in the middle of the frequency, we tend to be most sensitive with contrast, and when we are uh, kind of like away from the the central frequency, I mean spatial frequency, be careful also, like this is not frequency about light, it's a spatial frequency, then uh, our sensitivity with contrast tend to decrease. <coughs> and we kind of explain a little bit like about why we have the hybrid image. When we move into different distance, you can think of like uh, we are moving um, um, from one, uh, one sensitivity region to another sensitivity region. And then, like, when we are farther away, I mean, when we are closer, then we are kind of sen more sensitive to uh, what I want to say is, like, when, when you move your painting or picture, like, in different distance, then the width will change, right? So, therefore, like, this sensitivity curve will move a diff different part. And then, like, a a a and because of that, you will see different... Um, to you, you will uh, think of like different wavelength of uh, uh, different width of lines will will be more s to, you will be more sensitive to the uh, it's hard for me to say you will be more sensitive or I will be more sensitive or we will be more sensitive to contrast of different width of lines. So and um, uh, it's a kind of rough explanation, but it's kind of explaining like, why we, we we perceive the hybrid image that way. Um, so that's just another one. Okay. So uh, again, we go back to this painting here. Uh, really low one cannot see anything here. Like, can you see the hidden message here? Hidden. What? Yes. Yes. I think got that. So it's a it's a Lincoln. Um, and actually. Uh, yeah, if, if I do a low pass on this one, it's become more obvious. And uh, so maybe he, this uh, Salvador Dali should, should get a uh, tough, like, uh, I don't know, drawn offer for that paper in 2006. Like, he apparently already, like, kind of created a hybrid image way before those offers. So, um, okay. Uh, I guess next thing we will just go more detail into this frequency thing. So we should talk about some Fourier transform stuff. And but uh, I guess I again um, just just curious out of curiosity, like how how many of you guys like know what is Fourier transform, or like do you guys remember the equation for Fourier transform? If I have one D signal, I do a Fourier transform. What 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 what's the equation for that? Continuous function. I say continuous one D function F T. What's the Fourier transform for F T? And 
Okay, I guess this is one thing I, I would like you guys to remember. At least that's, that's, I think one of these is a, um, it, it's, it's kind of helpful because I, Fourier transform is so, um, I would say widely used in every discipline in engineering. It's so nice to, I mean, at least, uh, People ask you have a cup. You can show him with confidence that yeah, you know what's fully transform at least the definition, right? So and, and it's not hard to remember or something. So and by the way, like what fully transform is supposed to do, like what what it's trying to do, or like change the domain. Uh huh. The domain. That's a nice nice word I'm looking for. So but but uh, to what domain? Frequency. Yes, frequency. Ah, that's another one I'm looking for. This really nice. So you you want to kind of convert from the spatial or time domain signal to a frequency domain, right? So therefore, like uh, typically, for example, you have this is a some guy some some okay some time signal. Let's say one D signal. And I do a Fourier transform for that. And let's say I I get. Of course, I would get like a kind of like, let's say big F. Now it's like in frequency, right? So let's say I use omega. Omega is like lesser somehow. Of, of course, you can think of F also. Omega of F, like either way. Because I, uh, you know, like they, they are kind of just differ by a uh, scaling factor. So, and uh, then like the Fourier transform is something like uh, FW is a. Uh, I hate this one. Let's see if I get a, get a eraser. Uh, eraser. F T E J omega T or I. I don't know what you guys like to use. D T. But actually, what what you think of like? That's nothing really so special about this thing. So first, first of all, like this e j thing. Of course, j is the compass number. Right? So it's the square root of minus one, and uh, you, you. It's good to know also. Like this is actually just what. Anyone remember that? Like e j theta is. Yes, yes. It's cos theta plus j sin theta. So all like this would be like cos omega t plus j sin omega t. So we, let, let's ignore the compass part for the moment. But you think of like just the real part here. It's just some sinusoidal wave, right? And you have omega, it's just different frequency of sinusoidal wave. You give an omega there, that's the, if you give a bigger omega, it's just like, uh, what? Okay, bigger omega means what? Like, it's higher frequency or lower frequency? High, higher frequency, right? So this, this will be like something bigger omega than, let's say, than this one here, right? And, um, and what I want to say, like, this Fourier transform is really lovely, <coughs> but you have a sinusoidal wave. You're trying to project your signal into this sinusoidal wave. Right? This thing here is like an inner product between this FT here and this EJ omega T here. Ah. So if, if you think of what is inner product, as we, we mentioned correlation last time, it just means that you have this signal, 1D signal, you are going to correlate this sinusoidal signal with this whatever your FT here. So that means that like, for example, in 2D, that means you have like different frequency patches, right? and then you are going to just correlate the whole patches with the image. 
and then like each time you correlate that, you get a number, right? And that will be the um, basically the Fourier transform for that particular frequency. And you could keep doing that, like for all frequencies. And then <coughs> you basically have a so if actually I, I'm not um, okay. I, I I go a little bit. Uh, may go a bit uh, uh, ahead, but like if like I am talking about like uh, Fourier transform for frequencies, that means that like I'm going to have um, different frequency patches. So let's say this is one frequency. That's become difficult to draw it, but uh, for example, if if I have like um, a I have like a seal frequency vertically, um, kind of like a low fre frequency like horizontally, I will have a pattern, something like like that. So this is like darker region, darker region. This is like lighter region, and so on. And then like, I will just have this thing kind of like do a dot product with the image, and then afterward. This I will have because horizontally I have frequency is uh is let's say this is equal to two let's say and then like vertically there's no changes so the frequency may be zero then I will have this position like zero m two after the dot product and that's the value there for that thing and then I will just repeat it for the whole thing. And that's basically the Fourier transform. Um, and uh, so, and, and what was uh, amazing is that like, uh, it it turns out okay. If you think of that like, um. If you think of in terms of linear algebra, so again, I then I, I will ask you: Do you guys have any linear algebra? Oh, that's nice. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Ago. Really? Okay, okay, that's very <coughs> good. Or oh, and or like, um, I actually, that that's the nice part. Like if you, um. What, what I mean is sometimes math is getting better when you generalize. When you think of a specific, specific case, then math is not, um, can be pretty tedious. But when you try to generalize <laughs> that, like it, it can be pretty nice, especially if you think of like concept in pretty high level. Because like, for example, when, when I mentioned like, this Fourier transform, uh, if you think of like in terms of linear algebra and also basis, then it just means that like you have all these sinusoidal function at the basis, and you're kind of projecting from your original domain with a different rep representation. Have like the set of bases um, is basically generated by these frequency components there, and uh, and then if you think of like in terms of in linear algebra. What's going on is like this basis. It turns out to be also complete, complete in the sense that like you can use uh, this basis to represent any function there. So, in other words, that means that like you any kind of signal have a Fourier transform representation. So, it it may sound like at the beginning seems um, obvious, but it may not be right. You can do the transform. Of course, like you can always do the transform, right? But you have the basis is kind of complete or like kind of uh, able to represent any 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 images. It means that like you can do the image transform losslessly, losslessly, no matter what. So that means that you do the forward transform, and you can always do the backward transform to get back your original image. So. Um, And uh, so that this is just an illustration, basically saying that like okay, any signal is can be like represented by a linear transform, or 
oh sorry, uh, by Fourier transform. And uh, actually, um, this is, uh, if you think of that, this is not so obvious. And even say, some great scientists didn't believe, I mean, fully when he stated that like at the beginning. For example, we heard of Lagrange uh, or like Laplace and so on, Legenda, Legenda, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, and um, and like, all this like, kind of pity person, let's say, like at the beginning, they all think that like, mm, wow, well, I don't believe that. How, how can you represent any signal into this like combination of like sinusoidal wave at the time together? It doesn't sound like reasonable or something like that. But it turns out it's kind of mostly true. Um, engineers, we engineers just keep doing that. Maybe some mathematician will have some uh, kind of like footnote here and there saying that, oh yeah, signal is actually, is like uh, linear, I mean, sorry, a square summable and you have to stay there or the stuff like that, but yeah. So anyway, and uh, this is, some illustration that I mentioned earlier, so like uh, this would be like pattern, let's say, uh, if I represent this, okay, th this would be the like sinusoidal pattern that will have like co correspond to like frequency component like that. So as you can see that like horizontally, um, okay, I, I guess I need to specify first that like, uh, the center is zero here. The zero is the center. I mean, zero frequency is here. So, therefore, like, you see vertically, like, there's, there's no change in frequency, right? So, therefore, like, it's vertically is zero. Horizontally, it's low frequency, so it's like that. So, now, if I have a different pattern, like, kind of, like, diagonalized, then it would be like this one, right? So, I would have, like, along this direction, have, like, Kind of higher frequency than than this one here, so I I have the this the space between these three dots here is a little bit farther away than this one, and I can have like complicated pattern. It's like this one is just overlap of these two, so therefore like I I have the frequency uh, in frequency domain is just added together also, so we can do that because I also uh, Fourier transform itself is like linear, so if you add the original two functions in the spatial dom domain and you do the Fourier transform, they should be just like it should be the addition, the sum of the Fourier transform of each of the components. So this is another example that if you have a lateral images, it's a bit more complicated in the Fourier domain would be like that. So I guess I will just give you a quick uh, game here that uh, can, can you guess like which is which? What's one, like what was the, which image should result in the Fourier transform, the first one? Yes, 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 that's a very good guess. <laughs> <laughs> so at least for one thing, like, it's symmetric, right? For both cases, it's symmetric, right? For all directions, it, it seems to make sense. So uh, how about, this one probably is easy also, right? How about number three? Like, which one did I see? Yeah. A, yes, yes, yes. The rest, I, I, I would say, is quite difficult, honestly. Um, you may guess, I, 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 I probably only to look at the tree sheet to give you the real answer. Um, so, uh, probably you have some more, I mean, vertical, uh, horizontal components. I mean, this, this has lots of horizontal lines here, right? So that means that you have high frequency vertically. So maybe this one should goes to maybe this one? I'm not so sure, honestly. Or maybe, yeah. Oh, and, and also this may be easier, this one, because I, you, you see this line here is a little bit like skewed, like, like 
have a slight slope here, <coughs> and this also I have a slight slope here. Maybe this would probably this one, but yeah, this two is probably hard to uh, separate. So let's see which one is which. Let's see if I can. Uh, don't keep that. Let's see. Four is e. Yeah, four is e. That sounds right. Um, C is five way. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I, I think I guess correctly. So um. So anyway, and that's uh, another last demo. I maybe I just show you this one. I don't know. Maybe I can turn on the volume here. by transforming the image, images of this camera. And here we are. Um, you will notice that uh, I've turned this image black and white, uh, and the image on this side uh, shows us the Fourier transform of the camera image. Now, I should explain that this uh, that I, ha I have done this dem demonstration before, and you can actually find it, find it on YouTube. Um, so, if you've seen it before, uh, don't bother with watching this one, because it's pretty much the same demonstration. So, let's begin. The most simple structure is a single sphere in a solution. Uh, you will see that the, scatter, uh, that the scattering pattern of that consists of an oscillating function. Um, the, due to Bernays principle, uh, I cannot tell whether it's a white sphere on a black background or a black sphere on a white background. Uh, which is commonly referred to as the phase problem in both scattering and diffraction. You see that the patterns are the same. Uh, in scattering, the larger the structure, uh, the smaller the features. So here we see the, the structure of, uh, of a very large sphere. You see that if I, if I take it back a little bit, that the spacing between these, uh, between these oscillations increases. Uh, so the larger the structure, the uh, tighter the, the angles. Uh, anisotropic structures, like uh, cubes and ellipsoids, uh, will also show you an anisotropic scattering pattern. Uh, here we see ellipsoids, and you see that it, these patterns actually rotate together with the structure. So when you Fourier transform, or when you do a scattering experiment, the only thing that remains uh, conceptually easy is that all the angles, all the rotations, are exactly the same. Now, if I have a solution of, of structures, say spheres, you will see that if the solution is monodispersed, that the oscillations still persist. However, <coughs> if I have a polydispersed structure, you will see that the oscillations uh, uh, disappear because we're now seeing a superposition of the Fourier transforms of each of these structures, more or less. Uh, but of course, for polydispersed aligned structures, we see something like this. So we see a smeared out, uh, a smeared out pattern, but you can still see that it's anisotropic because if we rotate it, you see the main feature rotate together. Now to the diffraction examples. I have here a grid of points. You will see that the uh, that we now see the diffraction spots appear on the Fourier transform. And if I increase the spacing between the points, you will see that the um, that the uh, Fourier transform spacing reduces. Likewise, if I decrease the spacing between these points simply by moving this further away from the camera, the spacing between the points and Fourier transform increase. <coughs> Uh, similarly, we can do grids, in which case you see a nice uh, sort of kaleidoscopic effect of the grid. Um, there is one more feature to this Fourier transform, which I can switch on in a moment. Uh, this is actually more of a gimmick rather than a, rather than a feature. I can do the Fourier transform in color. Um, I still don't know whether it's going to be of any use, but you can show, for example, the interference pattern of spheres of different sizes with different colors. And you see that each color has its own uh, interference pattern because the sizes are different. Or you can show the Fourier transform of, uh, of different shapes, each with its own distinct color. Um, as I said, uh, 
just a gimmick, but uh, it's nice to know that you can do things in color sometimes. Now, if you uh, like a copy of this program, you can. Yeah, I guess that's the end here. Um, and uh, actually, by the way, source code is available, and I, I play with that. I'm I'm not sure. Like, I probably won't won't try it here now. And um, so, if you you just want to play with that, like you can just download that and just play with that at home. So, um, yeah, that okay. That's this slide has nothing really special about that. Oh, okay. Um, here just like a demonstration that like if we, you have all this free transform, I mean after you do the free transform, then you have all the coefficients, and let's see like if we only keep some of the coefficients, what happen? So this is like if we're keeping only the first first coefficient, I mean the lowest basically lowest frequency. So of course if we have the, only the lowest frequency, the whole image is flat, right? Then uh, I keep the first four basis function, like first four coefficients, and first nine, first 16, and if you go to first 400, then you more or less can get the original image. Of course, I have some artifacts here. Um, and, oh, by the way, like, the original free transform, as you realize, is complex, right? Of of course, like, you can al always think of it's like, let me say you saw the wave. And the, the, the reason to be complex is just, it's, it's simpler. If it's complex, then mathematically you you can get the inverse like easier. Basically, the inverse is like if you remember that forward transform is multiplied by this one uh, exponential. Um, yeah, I mean the forward transform is something like multiplied by the exponential something, right? And then the inverse transform is more or less like just multiplied by this ej omega t without this minus sign here. Yeah, there will be like some scaling factor here. It's basically 2 pi, but um, you can put 2 pi here or put 2 pi here. Sometimes people put like 1 over, one over 2 pi here, or sometimes people like put 1 over square root 2 pi like on both sides. So it doesn't matter, honestly. But um, but yeah, we we can even ignore the scaling factor like, if we don't really care about the, I mean we only care about the shape and not the uh, absolute values there. So um, but if you go to uh, go to a real transform, for example, if you go for a cosine transform, then the equation is m quite a bit more ugly. So so therefore, like yeah, it's kind of elegant like, to be complex in that case. But um, but because it's complex. Then of course uh, you have this magnitude, also the frequency, right? You have the phase, or as you say, say the phase, and also the uh, ma magnitude, right? So what we are showing like earlier is all the only the magnitude information. We are only showing the magnitude of the uh, coefficient there, and of course we can also show the phase. Um, so. As just a reminder, you have a complex number, then it can be represented uh, by the, uh, by, well, actually, I mean, generally, for any complex number, you can write it as a A, D, I, phi, something like that, right? Or J, phi, whatever. Then you have a phase here, you have the magnitude there, so. Um, and, uh, and of course, the phase, you can just compute that way to get it back so but uh okay something is kind of interesting well, we were only showing showing the magnitude um but maybe i should show you this one first uh let's see ah okay yeah we were oh, oh, oh. oh i should use amplitude amplitude actually what's the amplitude uh Oh yeah, amplitude is with the plus or minus sign magnitude would be like your absolute value. But anyway, I, I would just use it interchangeably, but honestly they are not the same thing. They they are different by a sign, can be. So but let me just say so we are showing the magnitude or like the amplitude and then the phase here. 
So in the past, we always throw in this amplitude image, and you can see the face is kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of uh, hard to get the idea of like what, what is going on. And one, one interesting thing I, I'd like to show is like this one. So um, this is a mixed image of two mixed, mixed images here. Uh, so of course you can get Siba and other one is what? A cheater or something. Then um, it's, it's generated by mixing the face image, face component of one image and then the amplitude component of this other image. So I like you to guess like for this one, the, the one on the left, so what kind of face did you use and what kind of amplitude do we use? So of course I, I, I probably the face, I, I should have used the cheetah face or like the, uh, the zebra face here. And then the amplitude, I may have used the zebra face, <coughs> uh, zebra amplitude and the cheetah amplitude. But, but, but my point is like, did I use here is say like cheetah face plus a zebra amplitude or uh, zebra face or cheetah amplitude? So which one do you think? Interface. So I have option one and option two here. So for the guys still haven't fallen asleep yet, maybe I will try to give a vote. So who said like option one? I can I can raise your hand. Like, do you, do you get my get my question again? Like so. Yeah. Just a guess, like, a fun guess. Like, no 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 penalties for anything. So option one. So, so few hands, really? Or maybe you want to waste higher. Okay. Yeah. Option one. Okay. So the rest option two, option two. There's some neutral. So most of you guys have no stand. Okay. Um. So uh. It turns out, oh, honestly, this is kind of interesting because I, again, I re always remember what I see is different from what you see and what you see is different from what other animals see. So this is, there's no something absolute. It's just something, it turns out that like, uh, actually it's a zebra face, but by like, cheetah amplitude. So we, we, we somehow like, we get the face information, we kind of like, Get, get the image from the face information instead of from the amplitude information. And I, I would like to say that this is not something, a obvious thing, right? It's not a must. Because like, if you think of like audios, it's totally opposite. We don't care about the face for audio. We only care about the amplitude. So for the frequency, we only care about like frequencies. Like, it's a mixture of different frequencies, but we don't care about like phase for each of the frequency component. We shift that, it, it doesn't change anything. We cannot tell the difference. But somehow just for vision, it worked that way. And, and, uh, and yeah, there's no explanation for that, honestly. And uh, what else? Uh, there's some property for Fourier transform I don't want, okay, linearity, of course, I mentioned that, like, want to make sure you guys realize, like, Fourier transform is linear, and, um, and also, like, we mentioned convolution last time, and this is another nice thing about convolution, we have the, uh, this Fourier transform property for convolution, right, so if you want to <coughs> compute the Fourier transform of uh, G convolved with H, it's simply like the multiple of like the two Fourier transforms. So um, it's something pretty nice because in practice it can be used for, for example, like for speed up. So for example, like if I have, um, let's see if I have anything here is related. So think of like if you have a, uh, do a, um, hmm, let's see, maybe, Maybe, maybe let's say I want to convolve this filter with these filters. So we can, of course, I do the convolution directly. 
But when this filter is pretty big, of course, like this filter looks like it's a little bit small, then maybe it doesn't matter that much. But if, if you have a pretty big filters, then a more effective way would be like you're trying to do the confusion, oh, sorry, do the Fourier transform for both filter and also the image, and then you just do a dot product between them. Dot product is very quick, and then do the inverse Fourier transform. And of course, like, this is efficient, mostly because like, Fourier transform is really efficient operation that you have fast Fourier transform is basically uh, almost n squared or something like that. Um, and uh, this is just illustration that like, if we do Fourier transform, we also can have fun just to add it at the Fourier, I mean, add it, uh, your image in the Fourier domain directly to get different different kind of like results here. Um, um, this, of course, this looks a bit weird, uh, but this, this, this actually, this um, is most common, I guess maybe like, because this basically, what we are doing would be like a low pass filter, right? So we do a free transform of this guy. If we just get out all the high frequency component and do an inverse transform, then we get a more or less this, uh, uh, low pass kind of effect here, but but you see like okay, there's lots of artifact here and there. Right? There's some ripple here and there. Um, is uh, oh okay. Why why you have this like artifacts? Do you do you know like? Kind of. So yes, if you think of this filter, it's like actually. Um, this, the problem of the filter is in frequency domain is, uh, let's see, this is frequency domain, right? It's too, too, the, 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 the transition is too sharp, basically. If you remember, like, uh, again, like in some cell processing class, if you have a step function, what's the free transform of the step function there? Or, or I can ask the other way, say if you have uh, some infrared domain, it's a step function, what's the inverse transform of that function there? It, it, it is a uh, so-called, mm -hmm. yes? Oh, okay, that's some, what, well, nice. Okay, what's that, like, Tosa? <laughs> People signal? Uh, not exactly, though, but thank you. Um, let's see. We have, this is like a step function, what I'm saying. So let's say if you have step function, um, if we do a free transform on that guy, what, what we get is actually a so-called sync function. So this is so, uh, it's kind of like, maybe I have a sync function somewhere. It's, uh, it, it's actually, it's uh, something like that. Boop, boop, boop. Like that, so it's actually a sine sort of a sine function over sine x over x, something like that. So and, and that is that's why we have all these ripples here. And uh, if you want to avoid these ripples, you just don't want to have this really big, like steep transition uh, for your filter. That's why when you have Gaussian filter, like you, you get the effect is smoother. As, as also we, we saw it last time also when we have Gaussian filter, the effect is actually better than we have a box filter because again, like for box filter, the trans transition is simply too deep. So therefore we have this ripple effect there. Uh, so um, of course we can do the other way one, like we, we can just, keep the high pass and remove the low pass, then we will have like something like remove all the smooth component that we, we get more or less like a, similar to an edge detector. And this is another application that I'm not sure it's an application because if it turns out you have a signal really kind of co-opted by this particular uh, frequency noise, then we can we know exactly what to remove, right? Then in this case, we can really remove it very nicely and can recover the original image like almost perfectly. And uh, 
So we mentioned this application here. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. At the beginning, right? So to repeat that, basically, we 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 will just can combine, say like one image, that we keep only the low pass component. We have one image, whatever. This is an image. We keep the low pass component here. We have another image. Keep the high pass component here, and then add them together, and then just do an inverse Fourier transform. Then supposing you will get a hybrid image. And uh, so that's 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 about it. That's kind of repeating a little bit what I said uh, that earlier. That you have a Gaussian filter because it's kind of smooth transition at the kind of like when you go to from uh, I mean hi, uh, high value to low value. So therefore, like it's, we get a smooth smooth pattern there. But if we have like a box side filters that have a steep transition, we have all these ripples uh, because of the same function there. Um, so convolution, we mentioned, we mentioned last time that like some kind of filter is like invertible, some other filter is not invertible. And uh, convolution, you can think of like, it's another kind of filter, so right? just convolution is, a, is yeah, convolution is a, a basic convolution is a linear filter, right? And um, so now we, we can ask, like, I, I would say that like, some, some filter, some, uh, some filters will be invertible, but some filters are not invertible. And if now you know Fourier transform, then it's easier for you to realize what kind of filter is invertible and what kind of filter is not invertible. Because we know that um, when we do a convolution, is just the same as I do in Fourier transform and multiply to to one another. Right? So that means that like if I want to do a kind of like inward uh, convolution or like deconvolution of the image, then basically I should do a Fourier transform of this guy. Actually, I probably yeah. Actually, this slide has problem, and I didn't realize that last time. And so I should be this one over this one, right? To get back this one. So I mean, like this order should be flip. So I should have this over this is equal to this. Makes sense, right? Because I have originally this multiplied by this, or this multiplied by this is equal to this. So I get this. I should this over this. Okay. So this should be swap. And um, so the problem, okay. Of course, like if I can do the division, then it'd be fine, but it's not always I can do the division, right? I can only do the division if and only if this filter itself is it's non-zero everywhere, right? If I have zero somewhere, then I, I, I will get a lot of lumber or something. So now then you know like when I can have filter that I can do the convolution or like I can it's invertible and in what case it's not invertible. It's invertible only when in the frequency domain of your filter it's non zero everywhere. So that will be invertible. Uh, for Gaussian filter because I it can't kind of decay but it decay very quickly but it doesn't decay exactly to zero in theory so uh, but honestly, numerically, if you make a very big filter and like if your width of your filter is kind of tiny, then then numerically it will be equal to zero. Then mostly you cannot kind of invert that uh, effect. But if your filter is kind of more widespread and also uh, you cut it off like before it goes, I mean it went down to zero, it goes down to zero, then it'll be invertible. Um, so the convolution is kind of hard. Like, uh, I, I got the slide like, from some other fellow. He said active research area. I kind of agree with that. Active I mean, there's still research could work on that, but uh, honestly, I would say it's a little bit dated. Uh, but of course, that research is just like, uh, I shouldn't say a fashion, but it's like really changed really, rather rapidly. I would say five, 
six years ago is kind of like, or maybe even 10 years ago is a pretty active research area. But having said that, like still it's, it's pretty hard problem. And um, the solution out there is not always perfect. Like it, it may work well for some cases, but it's not, it doesn't work well for all cases. And in particular, what you want for conf conf I mean deconvolution. Okay, by the way, I, I guess I, I may stop a little bit. Why, why even want deconvolution? Go back to the original. Yes, but, but isn't that like I, I, I apply the filter, why I suddenly change my mind, want to remove the filter again? Uh, it kind of can work as a PCA. I like your answer, but I guess uh, my question is different. I mean, like, uh, why we um, say, like, we, we keep talking about, like, a pine filter on some image, and then afterward, like, suddenly we, we say we want to deconvolve, deconvolve that. That means that we want to remove the effect of the filter. So why don't we just say don't do the filter at the first place? I think it will still re remove some features. It's not exactly invertible the original space. Mm -hmm. Probably yeah. you can use it for denoising or <coughs> yes. anything else. Oh, okay. Yeah. How, how did, did, I don't know. How about the rest? Like what? Did, did I make myself clear or like, yeah? yeah. I, I guess I, uh, that, 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 that's a catch here. Is like in some cases, like the filter is not intentional. You have the filter like appear in nature. For example, like you take a picture like with your camera, your hand is just not steady, right? Then your effect is like a filter. When you take the picture, you, you, it looks like you, you it just look like you have a little bit like kind of low pass filtering, that kind of stuff. So therefore, like you have blurring for your image and so on. So that kind of effect you want to remove, right? That's not, not something that like you have some intentional filter you apply on that and then you want to remove that. But it's like something like it just came out of later. Um, and uh, in that case, I, actually most of the time you don't even know what is the filter there for because I, you take the picture, you know that looks like some defect as a convolution, right? But you don't know what kind of filter that actually can model that kind of defect there. So that, that's why we, we, we have the word for this, like kind of blind deconvolution. It means that you don't even know what's that original filter or like the kernel it is. So, and uh, uh, there's lots of, uh, just for fun to, a uh, fun fact like how Fu Wei died. Uh, he just died like kind of wearing a blanket and like fell off like the stairs and he killed himself. Um, and uh, so, but, it's kind of okay, it died 62. I mean, like, at that time, 62 is reasonable, right? So it's not too bad. Um, and uh, maybe, okay, a quick word about JPEG. I'm not sure I even want to go into that. Maybe I shouldn't because I, uh, okay, JPEG is a compression, right? Really, really old compression. And uh, the first JPEG basically do a, Fourier transform like stuff, but a lot exactly Fourier transform, they call it like discrete cosine transform is just a variation of like transform. And then afterward, as we did earlier, we just remove some of this high frequency component and then just keep the low frequency one. And then we do some quantization as well to make it the number of bits to, I mean, to store it more efficiently. And then you can apply like Hoffman transform uh, that uh, basically say uh, entropy compression. If you don't know what is that and you're interested in what's Hoffman transform, you can take my information for your next, next, next semester. So, um, and, uh, and, and that's it. And also like if typically for color images, you convert to YUV component, that's like we mentioned in the first class or second class, 
in the car space, the commonest components is not sensitive to us. So then we just like, down sample a bit. So I see you guys are packing already, so I have to stop here. <laughs> so, um, and that's it. Okay, I guess I'm good at timing. So. Again, like that's homework assignment I like, uh, deal in a week or two. So we have some more assignments? Yes, uh, just check out the web, uh, yeah, the web page has a link there. Yeah. So you post it on Canvas? Yeah, I post on Canvas. So when is it new? It's on Canvas. Of uh, course, yeah, it's on Canvas, but Canvas will link to my website, so you can go to Canvas there. So, so a week or two, I forgot, like, a week and a half, I think. Yeah. And it's on transformation? Yeah, it's exactly on this uh, what, what, uh, hybrid image. I just want you guys to generate a hybrid image. And we can do it with Python and OpenCV? Yeah, Python, OpenCV, or MATLAB, like whatever you like.